Welcome again to Kung Fu for Health and Self-Defense. If you've seen some of the past episodes of this program, you're already better educated on the authentic fighting arts instead of the often inaccurate ideas believed by the general public. Some of your family members may have been following along with our instructional courses by trying the techniques at home themselves. Hopefully none of your furniture has been damaged. You've also learned there are vast differences between the philosophies and concepts of the various arts. Judo is different than karate, which is different than kung fu. Within kung fu alone, there are over 100 documented styles in existence today. Most of these methods were said to have been developed in the northern parts of China and later passed on to the south. The famous Northern Shaolin Monastery at Honan Province is considered the historical center for learning excellence in the kung fu world. Representing the Northern Shaolin system, which is the ancestor art to almost all other forms of Asian martial art, is my good friend, Manuel Marquez. How you doing? Good to have you on the show, Manuel. Right. You've sampled many different types of martial art before you chose and excelled in the Northern Shaolin style. Can you give us a little more information about yourself? Well, when I was a kid, I, since I was small, I decided to take uh, Taekwondo as 12 years old. And then from there, I progressed and uh, got my black belt. And then I switched to uh, Tanks It All and kept going. And then later on through my life, I decided that some of that stuff was not just the uh, right choice. So I kept uh, exceeding in my life, and uh, I switched to style to style until I got several different black belts. But later on, when I was um, about 22 years old, I decided to take Kung Fu, which was a completely different aspect in the martial arts. Uh, the herbs and everything, and the internal breathing and what have you. But from there, I learned um, the system from uh, Kamian, which is a Tai Chi Praying Mantis teacher. And um, he's taught me the uh, Northern Shaolin and Northern Praying Mantis. I see. Northern Shaolin has a long and colorful history. Can you trace the origin and development of that stuff? Well, first, before we even talk about that, the Northern Shaolin system is the oldest system, like they say, in, uh, in China. The, everything ev revolves around that culture in itself. It's practiced in China today, and it utilizes all conceivable ways in using one's hands and feet and body movement, and therefore acts as a stable, firm basis to take other martial arts. But because of the Northern Shaolin system is known for its high kick, swift mo footwork, and agility and, and speed that they have, that the techniques are emphasized only for short and long range. But two, the Northern Shaolin is a very unique system in itself. So you're saying it's the, the original art. What, when about was it started? Who started it and when did it start? It, 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 you can't trace it exactly, I know. The legends go way back into antiquity, but. Well, um, they can they go back pretty far, because in the 497 AD, the first Shaolin Temple was built. And they were there was consisting of 72 temples at one time, until uh, um, something like 567 AD, Tamil came over there to uh, to see the, the the priests. Right okay. here he is. The he came from India across the Himalaya mountains. Quite an auspicious looking character there. So it ri actually had traveled from India as far as yes, a lot of the, the breathing exercises mm -hmm. and things, right? But th see, he um, the emperor Wen in the Wei Dynasty. He developed the temple to help for all the local people and everything, and then. Too, is they, uh, the Buddhist monks at one time, they, they um, did a lot of feasts for the people of China. They uh, helped uh, China, the Chinese to uh, capture the Japanese army when they were attacking them on their coast. Uh, they helped them one time, with, they picked 13 of the best monks to fight and take over one of the uh, emperors Lang, in the Lang Dynasty. Okay, and this, this monk here, they uh, went out and they picked all the 13 people and they went out and helped this one master and they created a good name for themselves from there. Yeah, it's definitely became famous after that. Many people have already heard of the Shaolin Temple from movies or possibly the uh, popular Kung Fu TV series of the early 70s. My teacher, Ark Wong, played one of the chief monks on the pilot episode and your teacher, Cam Yuan, yeah, did the, the choreographing and played a monk and a couple other little parts in there. Right. He was on almost every episode, if yes, I remember yes. right. Quite Except often. for him and David Chow did uh, share that. I see. So, what, I know there have been many legends that have been handed down about the Shaolin Temple and its training. What were some of the methods that the monks used in order to acquire these supposedly superhuman powers they possessed? Well, the monks first, before they even started any of their training, they had to start at a lower level, like anything else. They had to help and uh, to pick up after and, and to feed and 
and clothed the other monks so that this helped their spirit so that they would have a, a thing of sharing and helping other people. Then as they got a little bit better, they went to uh, the, the, the uh, chambers. From there, they learned different aspects of uh, the Kung Fu. They started off with maybe a stance training. In the Lohan Hall, for instance, one of the mo most famous halls of them all, the, um, and they studied the stances and they pounded the ground for so many times that it actually made 40 to 50 centimeters deep into the ground of the, on the tile, on the style. That's yeah. right. And in fact, mentioning the uh, halls of the Shaolin Temple, this particular picture is a mural that's on one of the halls. And I don't know how close the camera can get. It's pretty detailed. It dates back approximately 200 years, but of course, like Manuel was uh, stating, the Shaolin Temple is much older than just 200 years. But this, someone took a lot of time to show the different combat postures of the monks, and amazingly, it looks a lot like the Northern Shaolin we practice nowadays. Yes, it is. And it, um, well, the spirit and the style is still carried on to this day, because the, the temple in itself is over 14,000 years old. I see. Now, many people misunderstand Northern Shaolin. They say that the movements are too fancy, too flowery, more like a ballet dance than an effective means of combat. So what would your rebuttal these kind of comments be? Well, um, for one, if somebody has never trained, they should try to train that, to find out. Because there's a lot of hidden techniques like any southern or northern techniques. Uh, they, the, they emphasize on high kicks and speed and agility, but the inner trapping that they have, they have to come up close and to throw the body or sweep them. Right, so the movement may not be performed precisely as it is in the form, as it is in an actual yeah. combat well, situation. It, it is pretty, pretty, pretty close. Mm. Just because it's just like a, maybe the hand movement of a twist or a punch or a kick could be, uh, just the height could be adjusted, and that's about it. Shortened up, possibly, mm -hmm. or whatever, I see. Northern Shaolin truly is beautiful to behold. And now, with the help of Manuel and some of his students from his Torrance School, you'll be seeing forms and techniques of that art. Now, you viewers at home, can either sit back, relax, and enjoy the show, or encourage you to get up off the couch and join in with us. You no longer have to shave your head, go live in a cave in the mountains, and become a monk to learn Kung Fu. You just turn on your TV set. There it is for you. Okay, my name is Manuel. Okay, in the Northern Shaolin system, we have long kicks and long punches. And here is the first basic punches and kicks that we have. Upper circle block. Okay, downward circle block. Okay, a block and a circle block. Okay, for these punches, they could be used in long or short form. Now we're going to have Al Simmons, one of my students, doing the kicks. My name is Al Simmons. I'm going to do a series of three kicks. The first one is a double front kick, followed up by a um, outer leg block uh, series of kicks, and then followed, following that are uh, <coughs> crescent kicks. Next, uh, Manuel Marcos will do, will be next. Okay, in the Northern Shaolin system, we have the long and extension of kicks and punches. Have you seen the extension going forward or a kick going outward? But we do have the short version of everything that we have, and it could be broken down to several things. It could be in the long extension, coming across, it could be a kick coming across, or it could be a spin coming across, 
But in this system we have, they can be broken down to short movements. Along with the stances that we have, the basic stances is our horse. Side stance, cross stance, upper leg, and the horse. From here, we can drive and go to different areas. We can come switching around, or the extension of a long fist coming around into the area. So what we do is we break down each individual thing. The first thing we're going to show is a combination exercise, which is Reggie. These are uh, Northern Shaolin combination exercises called Tan Tui, meaning springy hands and feet. I'm going to do the number one combination. Next is Al coming up. Next will be uh, Northern Shell in combination number four. And next is manual. On these exercises, they're the first basic exercise that we have for kicking and punching. They call it Tan Tui, springy hands and feet. For the motion that you see for both these people, they were noticing the longer extension and kicks. Okay, this is the eighth one of our exercises. Okay, on these exercises, they can be broken down to a series of things. Okay, I'm going to have my, owl, my student owl with me right now. Okay, the first one could be a basic block. He could be punching, hitting, walking, striking. Okay, for the inside movements. Now, for the short technique, it would be for the punch, block, hit, coming in, wrapping around, and swinging under. Okay, now we're going to keep going and we're going to do another series of the leg techniques. Okay, a basic easy little stuff, okay. Now in the movement that we have, we have our legs. So the punch comes, he can be blocked, stepped in with leg as arm break. Okay, okay now we're going to have the forms, okay. We're going to first have Reggie Gonzalez to his first one. I'm going to do a form called Small Circular Fist. It's the third form taught in our Shaolin system. Ready, begin. Now Al's going to come out and do a form called Ling Po. This is a form called Ling Po. It's a second Shaolin form learned in our system, developed by uh, Master Ku Yu Chang.
next will be Manuel Marcus. Okay, on these forms here, they were derived for certain te uh, techniques and applications. As the first one was a long fist coming under a breaking movement, and the other one was developed by an iron palm master, which you could break down segments of the movement. And everything that you have here was made for a certain design of attack, and uh, and everything that comes into one part will actually be fought with different people, okay? Because if you, you know, if you fight on the street, you do not fight the same way, because everybody has a different way. I'm going to do the first form in our Shaolin system called Shaolin Six. Okay, in these forms here, there's high motion, high kicks, and a lot of velocity in the punches. Okay, we're going to break these forms down into techniques now. Okay, the first one will be Reggie now. We're going to do a technique from the first couple movements in small circular fists. We'll just go and show you. Okay, the opponent grabs the shirt. You break away his hold. Coming down, double punch to the stomach. Breaking away the hold again. Circle, dip, punch to the lower midsection. As he punches again, you hit him again in the lower midsection. Hooking the hand, coming up, palming the kidney area, hooking the shoulder. Rolling it over, placing a knee up underneath the shoulder. So he goes to strike again. You hook it, elbow to the other arm, and a hammer to the head. Okay, now we'll do it, speed it up. Now we're going to do a, uh, a segment of Ling Po, uh, an application of the beginning of Ling Po. Um, we have tray sides. Mm -hmm. so, first of all, we're going to do this in slow motion. Uh, Manuel's going to punch. I'm going to trap, twist the arm, block. <coughs> Hook the arm, step in, come to the face of the mana strike, blocking with this arm also. Going into a, a stance like this, blocking the knee and breaking the collarbone. Block, punch to the face, block down with the other punch. Side fist to the face. Block, blocking forward, chopping to the neck, and over the G and down. Now we're going to speed it up a little bit. Next will be Reggie and Matthew. Okay, now the form that I did in Shellin 6. A lot of people say that a lot of that looks flashy because of the high jumps and kicks and the movement that it has. But yes, it can be broken down into combative aspects. First, we'll show you this. An internalist, after so, so long, will take a breath before he does his technique. 
And as the person's coming in with the punch, he blocks with parrying in both hands, sliding up and hitting in the chin. Then as, again, as the punch comes, he blocks and kicks to the stomach. He walks in forward with the punch, hooks the hand, edges, comes behind, and hammers into the gut. And now we're going to do this technique a little bit faster. Okay. Now, if you see that the movement of the body can block an arm, lock in the joints, and again, trip the person up. So it doesn't matter how flashy or of a, a form can be, it can still be used as a fighting aspect. Wow, that was excellent, man. Very graceful and very effective at the fast speed, you can see it. Many people have a hard time grasping the idea of a religious person being a deadly fighter. It's just too much of a contradiction of personalities. So, what kind of philosophy and moral code of honor did these warrior monks of the Shaolin Temple live by? Well, they had a thing like this. They were trained for, for one purpose. That was the health and the, and the reasons of mind and body control. And without that, they, a person would not have that peaceful feeling inside, and they, they can go out and start a lot of trouble. But if you train for a while, your inner soul becomes happy because of your body being so clean. And from all the things that we have learned, the philosophy of everything is to maintain and be happy and to help all the people that are around you because you have your that inner ability that you have that shines. And you can learn a lot and do things. And when you have the ability to do other things, you can have help a lot of people in their abilities that they have weaknesses in. Right, right. A lot of them were also doctors. Yeah, doctors. Healers, things like that. Uh, philosophers, always trying to administer their Even health. the art and music, it, it went into so many different aspects that they had. Right. Western scientists are now stating that our existence is shaped and directed by our own intent. We are pushing our physical capabilities to greater limits along with our mental capacities. The priests of the Shaolin Temple were cultivating this type of knowledge almost 2,000 years ago. We who follow in their footsteps intend to utilize the wisdom of the past to propel mankind's potential into the future. I'd like to thank Manuel, okay. Reggie, and Al for all joining in. There's not much room to perform Northern Shaolin here, and I think they did a fine job with it. And I'd like to say that martial arts is a lot of hard work, and we do try hard. Also, we work very hard on this program to educate you accurately on the historical, the philosophical, the mental, all aspects of martial arts, which is not always represented in the media until now, hopefully. Thank God. Right. And now the salute.